Now let's consider the 19th century German economist Friedrich List. List's life spanned 1789 to 1846, and in addition to his writings on economics, he was well known as a promoter of rail, and also that his ideas were a forerunner of contemporary European unity. List worked as a professor in Germany, but he also lived for a while in the United States, where he made a fair amount of money in business and owning land. Here's a stamp with a picture of List on it, and in the background, of course, you can see a railway. His major work in economics is titled The National System of Political Economy, and it was first published in German in 1841. Overall, List is probably best known for his critique of free trade, but he's actually a much broader thinker than that, and in fact he's one of the first economists to have a really good understanding of increasing returns and economic growth. Reading the national system, it's clear just how much List at virtually every turn in every chapter is responding to Adam Smith, and he sees himself quite self-consciously as revising Adam Smith's maxims about growth and trade. One very clear theme in List's work, drawing out some ideas from Smith, is the power of human capital to drive economic growth. Here's one illustrative quotation, and I quote, The present state of the nations is the result of the accumulation of all discoveries, inventions, improvements, perfections, and exertions of all generations which have lived before us. They form the mental capital of the present human race. Least also stresses the power of science more than most economists who came before him, including Adam Smith. Smith, who of course was writing much earlier, had a much more modest sense of what science can do. But reading List, we see quite a modern understanding of the power of scientific invention to drive economic growth. If there's any single dominant theme in the writings of List, I would say it's an understanding of the dynamism of manufacturing. So List said that what he believed in was what he called the industrial system, and he compared this to Smith's foil, which Smith had called the mercantile system, and List thought that, yes, the mercantile system was obsolete, but the power of the industrial system meant that Smith's doctrines had to be revised. And List asked quite directly, well, this idea of the industrial system, where did it come from? Who invented it? And he's quite clear that it is derived from actual English practice rather than from theory. One of the best sections in the book is when Least runs through the preconditions for English economic success. For Least, this list of preconditions included, first and foremost, strong manufacturing, as all-important, and also well-developed domestic industry. Least put a great stress also on the notion of shipping and marine trade, and in general infrastructure and easy transportation. You can see just how much Least's ideas relate to modern notions of increasing returns. He also saw England as successful because the country had a strong nation-state early on and was relatively immune and protected from foreign invasion. England also had strong internal free markets, so although List favored protection through tariffs in some regards, he thought that internal trade should be very free. The British had achieved that. England also had colonies abroad, which helped spur economic growth and created markets for British products. And finally, he praised repeatedly the energies of the English people. You put all these ingredients together, and for List, that was what was driving this economic miracle known as England. There's a lot about the power of markets in this book, but List also stresses, well, what is the state really needed for? And some of the key functions here, other than just basic self-defense, are the state is needed to support domestic manufacturing, the state is needed to help create a marine force, so List was very much a defender of the British Navigation Acts, and a strong state is needed to secure open foreign trade for a nation such as Great Britain. List is best known these days for his critique of free trade, but I would stress he's a somewhat limited protectionist. So where he wanted tariffs mostly was on manufacturing, to spur the development of a domestic manufacturing base, but he stressed it was important that eventually these tariffs would be removed and the industries forced to compete in free world markets, and he thought basically that you get rid of trade restraints and tariffs once you have obtained a certain amount of supremacy. 
least also consistently in my view, he favored the repeal of the Corn Laws in Great Britain. His argument was that by protecting growers of grain within Great Britain, this was actually keeping resources from flowing into manufacturing, and manufacturing was the dynamic sector, so let's have free trade in grain and allow those resources to be put to greater use elsewhere. Least does show quite a sophisticated grasp of these arguments, although on a number of points I'm not quite convinced. For instance, the notion that someday you remove the tariffs when the time is right and so on, I think Least systematically underrates the public choice critique of protectionism, which is to note that once protection is in place, it's very hard to get rid of, special interests have a lot of sway, and this notion of some kind of optimal path of moving from protectionism to free trade, well, it's very difficult for developing nations to get that just right. To read more on List, of course, there's Google, and in particular, I would recommend the Wikipedia page on him, which is very good and has many useful links. For a sense of aspects of List's writing still resonate today, well, listen to the TED Talk by Alex Tabarrok, and also go to our class on development economics and view the videos on Danny Roderick and also Paul Romer.